What's up, Zox fam? We are back with some more Deathlight. Now, we're getting into last but not least, 17 through 20 for Andres. Now, I wanted to kind of talk about this, especially because this is the current in-game standard dungeon that a lot of us are farming. And just kind of getting into the like nitty-gritty of some of the units that you might already have, uh, as well as some that you might need to acquire. So we're going to go ahead and get into the mechanics, obviously showing some team comps and some runs. Uh, but let's go ahead and let's get right into it, okay? Uh, so first things first. What exactly has changed about the new Andres? Uh, so this is Andres Expert. In Expert mode, Andres gains the Supreme Fury effect, which this seems to be the effect that every single boss gets, right? Now, it says it acts first at the start of combat. Attributes increase when taking hits. Gains a significant boost when there are fewer than five surviving espers or when there are espers with low HP. Uh, each allied shimmer esper uh, deployed significantly amplifies all shimmer espers damage so this is very different than the other dungeon because technically in this dungeon all attributes can be utilized but there is an extra buff that is applied when you have more shimmers in the party okay uh now it says andre's passive ability which is the eternal pain makes allies immune to ap down effects right now it says when andres is not debuff it allows andres to deal extra damage so that's already hinting at the fact that you have to be applying debuffs right now it says with that when attacking targets with higher crit rate than Andres, it dispels all their buffs and extends all their ability cooldowns, and it cannot be resisted. Okay, so low crit rate is going to be necessary for this. This is kind of the standard thing you need for Andres. Uh, most characters that get ran here usually don't have any crit in the subs at all, if you can help it, right? Uh, now, with that, uh, it says additionally, Andres can significantly amplify allies' non-crit damage taken and greatly reduce their crit damage taken. Um, so so with that, when any ally takes crit damage, Andre's AP is increased. Moreover, at the start of Andre's turn, the duration of all ally debuffs is reduced. So having someone that's able to extend, again, very, very important. That's why units like Hilda are going to be massive here, right? Uh, and it says Spectral Companions call in all followers for a powerful AoE assist attack. If there are no surviving followers, new ones are summoned at the cost of HP, which obviously is the way or the metric to kill him faster on top of the HP or true damage that you might already be dealing. Um, now, it says, therefore, to defeat Andres more efficiently, you can deploy Espers with AoE Poison and Bleed and non-critical attacks to eliminate his followers quickly you can also use espers that can extend debuff durations to make poison and bleed on the boss and maramon more reliable and effective meanwhile andre's bone piercing thorns deal true or deals high true damage based on attack and inflicts uh gangrene on all enemies and significantly reduces enemies healing thus using espers who excel at attack down and healing shield will improve survivability and when they're referring to healing shield i feel like they're literally saying have leon <laughs> like that's literally who they're saying at that point which is kind of ironic right because if we go and we look at the options you got hilda ife kara jacob camille uh jenny for non-critical javid meredith nora um extend debuff durations hilda tricky intasar um you have have Ife for the attack down, Gabby, Koharu, uh, and then of course that shield. Like I said, Leon, Abigail, Liora, and Berenice. Okay, uh, so let's actually get into some of the runs that are currently up right now. And this is to better kind of explain and kind of just break down some of the teams. So I'm going to show you 20, right? So 20, right now there are only three teams. Now, I waited a full day just to see if there were going to be any other teams that presented themselves. And these seem to be like some of the more reliable ones for right now. Now, I will say investment on the official server for some people is probably a lot higher. So that also plays a very pivotal point into what you might have access to. Um, but the fastest run here does have an r6 leon and i'm not gonna lie leon at r6 is pretty broken she gives like a crap ton of shield coverage so i'm going to show you guys the run first and then we'll actually talk about the units individually um because the, again the units that are actually on this team i will say free to play at most most will have about probably the Jin Cho and the Daji, right? So everybody's at least guaranteed to have those two units. 
which again are super effective against Andres, right? Um, I would even argue Dodgy is just great in Ritual Miracle altogether. So having her, which we're currently getting her from the Celestial Anomaly, and then having you know the uh, the Jin Cho is going to be very, very, very important to the run. Now, I would even say, like, you can utilize different units to substitute out Leon, like Sally, for example. Um, but I will say on floor 20, impact healing is definitely way better than waiting for my units to get a turn heal, right? Now, of course, Hilda is meta here, but you still have units like Kara who can also utilize, be utilized as well. Um, you have Ife, but it's just no one that compares remotely to Hilda's poison output when you're looking at how effective she can be doing that, defense breaking, etc. right? Now, I know a lot of people are probably wondering why exactly is Hephaestus here. Now, again, Hephaestus is able to share the Calamity set. I'm almost certain that this is a Calamity build because this is the only set that makes sense when you're trying to do things like Andres, right? So being able to share that means that you're basically going to be able to deal more damage on units that are debuffed, which is like insane here. But everybody here, Jin Cho, you have, uh, you know, Daji, they're all doing true damage on top of everything else, right? So poison on top of all the true damage that you're dealing, this is going to be basically getting rid of these tablets much, much quicker. So once these tablets actually disappear like they're about to now, there's obviously that same standard like dip in HP when Andres goes to actually resummon. Now, I've seen some team comps that still are utilizing Tever. Problem is Tever, like, like dude, this dude crits so much. And I think the higher up you go, it's going to be a little bit more abusive to that. Um, but as you can see, already at 17 stacks. So it's going to be really hard not to stack on Andres just because it's a much longer fight. You can't use AP down on this boss at all. Uh, so you really have to be in a position to be able to tank out a lot of this damage. Um, but nonetheless, like I said, Jin Cho having the dodgy there, um, being able to uh, negate what she can debuff wise and then also then being able to inflict that uh, true damage um, as well is going to be really, really impactful. So it looks like we got the gang uh, gangrene. And then honestly, I think this team is going to honestly kill Andres before they even have to wear down the tablets. So Jin Cho with the punish evil. Boom, boom. Pretty, like, that damage is just so insane from Jincho. Go again. Cleave. Dude, yeah, I love Jincho for this. Like, I, I'm actually really glad they did buff him because they just made him so much better for this. So, yeah, they're already almost done. Yeah, so before the tablets even get wasted here, Jincho, uh, or not Jincho, Andres is already out of here. Boom. Another big hit. Oh, actually, no. God, no. Okay, never mind. I didn't think they were going to need to, but hey, just for just 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 cuz. So still with this being about a two minute run, some people are going to be able to do this a little bit quicker, but two minutes is still not bad considering this is a new floor entirely. So obviously this team is kind of the strat, right? Like this is like what you're going to see working up or at the top uh, for sure, right? Like we look at the stats here. Hilda, obviously, like her damage is just nuts because she's doing poison protection, a thousand percent coming from Leon. Jin Cho is still a huge contributing factor to damage and as well as uh, Sujue as well, right? Haley's really here, um, just kind of like a stand in for taking on some of that damage, but really honestly, primarily sharing that calamity set because that is good, is that's going to scale the damage output that you have as well. So we go back. And we actually take a look at the gear because I want to make sure you guys also see some of the gear. And actually, even then, right, like if you're looking at some of the runs prior to, uh, you can see it's still some of that like standard, like, OK, we're going to use the Anna abusive Tever, um, obviously Schwan pin. Like this isn't realistic. That's why I kind of just stayed away from this. Not everybody's going to have a full team to even do this. So it's not really a tangible like, you know. Uh, viewing really for someone uh, where it's like, okay, Meredith with the lead, uh, Leon, um, you have Tever, uh, of course, Abby and Liam is also an option. Um, you still see that the new Esper actually can be utilized on lower floors as well. Um, and then, of course, you have Function. Function is great, but the problem you're going to run into on upper floors is that he crits too much, right? Like that's just going to be a big thing. So again, going Leon is going to be the way to go. But I'll show you guys that team comp um, and just the gear, right? Uh, so 
win set on the Leon HP HP speed. Uh, this is going to be the Aegis set, so you get that shield in the beginning. Now, the reason why the Aegis set is actually going to have more value here is because it is a set that is applied, and even though it only lasts for X amount of turns, the thing you have to deal with now is the fact that Andres and all these bosses are actually going to be going first. So the Aegis set actually has gotten shot up in value because that can actually be utilized to offset some of the gear requirement but that you might have needed stat wise in order for your team to survive or even like specific units for your team to be able to survive so this is actually a really really good set um and then of course having that s3 cooldown uh is pretty big if they could get the s2 cooldown she'd just be even more efficient um but yeah she is r6 so her shielding output is just absolutely insane um but i would even argue even having her at like r0 is still good um and you can still make something happen with her from r0 to r2 right like that's still a decent unit and i mean she's still the best like shielding healing unit at that point um then we co of course we have jincho jincho past r2 absolutely like broken when doing Andres, um, of course, you have attack percent, attack percent, and speed. Uh, I've seen some people do attack percent, attack percent, and then attack, or sorry, attack percent, attack percent, and attack percent. Um, but I would argue that you kind of want him to be rotating here um, because, again, you are really in a dire position where you want him to be as active as possible the crit um or sorry the avatar set uh, is going to be actually allowing you to get some of those extra turns in um and so yeah you can make do with him having a speed boot versus just having pure attack on him obviously like i said crit rate values you want extremely low uh because you don't want to be critting at all um against andres because that's just going to make him and really honestly just enable him more so we're staying away from that but that is absolutely a perfect build for Jin Cho for um for doing uh, Andres 20. Um, then we have Hilda, very, very straightforward, defense percent, accuracy, and speed. A fairly easy build. We'll say maxing her out on skill ups is going to be pretty nice. Getting those cooldowns are going to be like massive. Defense conversion, the poison extension, um, all of that stuff uh, is going to be nice for her. Of course, having her above R2. Um, I mean, you're really not going to be making too much use of the, um, the uh, what's it called, the deep sleep, because you're not able to inflict sleep here right so you're not really too concerned with that so her kit just works as is which is great um and then again keep in mind that speed 120 speed um is actually pretty nice just to keep her rotating then of course Haley hephaestus now she is literally here to do one thing right Smelting Mastery. The carrier gains the caster's equip equipment set effect. And if the effects are the same as the set effects of the carrier they already have equipped, it, they would not take effect. She's also inflicting Seer and the Molten Hot, which is going to allow the effect of the equip equipment set that expires or it expires it. Uh, and then for non-player units, the effect becomes a minus 20% and defense minus 20%. So even though they're not able to have the set effect applied to the tablets, you're still going to get that minus 20 percent attack and minus 20 percent defense which allows you to do more damage um which is huge right uh of course sharing the calamity set final damage against targets with a debuff plus 20 percent and for each additional debuff on the target damage is plus three percent with a maximum additional increase of 15 percent right uh now as far as the build is attack percent accuracy and attack percent okay uh and that is on the avatar giving you that crit chance which if you look at the s1 you're able to inflict defense down and the molten hot which is going to be applying that attack percent minus 20 percent and defense minus 20 percent as well so very very huge now lastly we have sujue or daji same build here i think she was used on another comp so uh attack percent attack percent and attack percent okay so it's not a whole bunch of speed flying around certain units like obviously hilda a little bit more important uh but this is on the war set and the groove set right um, and then, of course, the lead that you're getting here is a 30% HP increase, um, and that's just going to help you with sustain, right? That gives more healing potency to units like Leon, more shielding as well, um, and just makes her a lot more effective for what you need her for. So all in all and through and through, this is going to be what you can prepare. Obviously, you have other units like Gabby who still work here with giving you shield, giving you, uh, or sorry, not shield, uh, defense up. She also gives you immunity coverage. Um, and then, of course, she also has the attack break that also can be utilized. Got to be careful with her, though. You really want to lower her crit rate values. And because she hits so much, 
there's a high chance that she still will crit, right? Um, and then, of course, Abigail is able to give you shielding, right? She gives you absorb, which allows you to be able to restore your own HP, which is pretty massive. Um, and then I'll even show you there. So HP reset, HP reset, and speed on that Aegis set. Because like I said, that Aegis set is going to start shooting back up to the top because of the fact that they go first. And then, of course, we got Gabby here with HP percent, HP percent, and speed on the boot. Um, at that 173, got to keep her rotating because she is your buffer debuffer primarily for this run. Um, so outside of Hilda for the damage aspect, right? Uh, so, yeah, guys, that's basically that. I wanted to make sure you guys had this information so that you could be as much as prepared before the update comes. Um, I will obviously still be running and testing a whole bunch and a whole slew of different things because I have more just invested on my main account or official server account. So we'll be able to actually test out certain things. We'll do it live because I know you guys might have questions and I literally have almost every single unit minus a couple of shimmers in the game uh, we'll probably end up pulling on that stream as well so we'll see how things go but that's going to be basically that guys everyone stay blessed and i appreciate you guys for tuning in and i'll catch you guys in the next one